Hello and welcome to the final part of my how to use the combat tracker when playing Savage Worlds Online with Fantasy Grounds 2. Today I'm going over the group entry and using effects. So what I'll do is I'll create a combat, delete the, the default entry, add an ogre in, and what I usually do is I will add multiple goblins, it will number them. And obviously as combat goes through it will go, it will move through them. However, the group entry is designed to cl more closely mimic the rules inside Savage Worlds. So if we take a goblin and drop it on the group entry box, it will create sub-entries for the goblins. And then when the cards are dealt, only two cards are dealt, one to the goblin, and so all the goblins act on the same card, and one's dealt to the ogres. If I click next actor, it will still correctly move down through the goblins, then it will get to the ogre, closing up the group to tidy up the combat tracker. When I hit next actor, it will deal out new cards, and again, as I move down the combat tracker. On paper, it looks very good, but what I find is it can be very, very flaky. If we have the we'll have PC on, we'll add the ogre onto the map, we'll add the first goblin on, We'll add the second goblin on, we'll add the third goblin on, we'll add the fourth goblin on, reset the combat tracker, share out the mini sheet, make sure the map's up to date, start the combat. So off the ogre goes, chunga chunga. Now the player comes along and he decides to target a goblin. Now it rings it. It rings the goblin on the map, but as you can see there, there's no icon selected. Now what I have noticed is that if you sometimes delete the icons, and then add them back, the player now can click on them, and highlight the icon. But anyway, we'll move on through the goblins, and we'll go on to the next round, and the goblins have got initiative again, and now if the player clicks... So, the only way i found to use this is if you really want to use this group entry thing, every time it's the new monster, the, the group monster's turn, you have to remove them and re-add them to the combat tracker just so the players can target which goblin's being selected, in this case, in the combat tracker. I personally find it a little more annoying to have a big combat tracker, but the function there's more functionality. So anyway, also yes, you c you can delete the goblins here. As you can see, it's not updating them from the map. What I found is if you make the mistake of deleting the top goblin, then the the the, the uh, combat tracker breaks. I personally recommend you don't worry too much about using it. So now I'm going to cover effects. So I'll create another new combat tracker. We won't make that. So we'll pop on an ogre shaman and we'll pop on a couple of goblins. So let's just say for the sake of argument in the middle of combat. So let's um, deal some deal some cards. So, for example, th th as the fight's going on, you decide the Ogre Shaman costs armor. So we'll click the barrier effect, we'll pop armor on, and the default for armor is it's going to last three rounds. Uh, if he wants to maintain it after that, then he, he's going to have to spend an extra power point around. So basically, you, it's going to last three rounds, so you're going to put a minus one. So every time it comes around to the Ogre Shaman, it's going to decrease the armor. And then when you carry on the combat, it gets the Ogre Shaman. As you can see, it's dropped to my, uh, down to two. And then when it gets the Ogre Shaman again, it drops to one. And then on the third round, when it reaches the Ogre Shaman, it tells you that the ogre armor on the Ogre Shaman has expired. Now this, of course, means you can now decide to spend another power point to keep it man uh, up and running, or likewise, you can in the game. Yeah, explain how it works. Obviously this will also apply to PCs, so if we have a PC player, for example we can assume that the, uh, the uh, Shaman has got some form of confusion spell or power, that uh, if it's successfully cast on a player it will affect him 
for two combat rounds. And as you can see here, what's happened is, although it's been applied to the PC, it updates on the Ogre Shamer's turn, because that's when it's cast. So as we move through the combat, on the player's go, he's still confused, because, and it's got two turns to go, and it hits the Ogre Shaman, and it reduces. And again, the Ogre Shamer's go, so down to minus one, Now Mr. Big is free to act. So Mr. Big PC is actually quite a powerful mage and he decides to cast Stun on the Ogre Shaman. Now yes you can come up here, you can type in Stun. I know actually Stun isn't instantaneous but this is obviously some strange variation that shakes you for three rounds and goes down by minus one at a time. No problem at all. However, what you can do, I'll just delete this, if we click on the FX button, it will open up the effects window where you can store a number of these effects to apply during combat. At the moment I've only got stun in there, so we can drag the stun down, drop it onto the uh, tracker, and I've noticed sometimes it does seem to add it twice. All you need to do is just get rid of the text, press the delete key when there's no text and it will delete the entry. And then when the combat tracker goes on, you can see it's only updated on Mr. Big PC. And there it goes. It should be worth noting that the message that's appeared in that window does not appear on the player's screen, only on the GM side. So if you were applying effects that the players wouldn't know about, there would be none there either. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, this is the end of the combat tracker how-tos. If you have a particular preference, please uh, drop a request into savageworldsonline.net. Thank you very much.